Hello, I'm David Laurie Vanderbeek and this is Occupy Freedom. Today we're going to be talking all about Benghazi. It's bigger than Watergate. Hillary Clinton's statement, what difference does it make? CIA operators denied requests for help during the Benghazi attack. Uh, told, CIA told us to stand down during the fight. And uh, we're also going to hear some of the testimony of Ms. Clinton herself. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, this is Occupy Freedom. I'm David Laurie Vanderbeek. I am the next governor of Nevada. If you want to get involved or follow the campaign, you go to nevadagovernor2014.com. If you want something on this show, you can email me at david at nevadagovernor2014.com. You can follow us on Facebook, just uh, putting my name, David Laurie Vanderbeek. There's a fan page and my personal page, you can follow it. Our Twitter is US Family Man, <clears throat> and the YouTube channel is just my first and middle name, David Laurie. Uh, where all, we put up all the episodes if you miss it. Now, there's this Super Soldier and Mind Control Summit, the second summit. It's on May 17th through the 19th in Henderson, Nevada. I'm actually uh, concerned with this. I'll be spe speaking briefly there, making some opening remarks, because I am very concerned about the treatment of our soldiers and how they're being experimented on and used as guinea pigs to develop what are called Super Soldiers. Um, <clears throat> so I believe in listening to everyone and hearing what their concerns are. So if you want to get tickets for that, you go to supersoldiersummit.com uh, and you can get tickets there. So they'll have experts and people who've experienced it firsthand speaking there. Now I'm going to be talking about Benghazi for this entire episode. And I want you to know that I consider it an honor and a blessing to be able to share this information with you. Um, I feel so blessed to be a warrior for the truth. And I'm, I'm blessed to be a wolf and not a sheep, one of the sheep who believes anything the government tells them. And I pray to God every day that he'll protect my wife and my children so that I could be in this position. And that God, and I want you to know that God's answered my prayers and watching over my family. And I want Heavenly Father, our Lord, to know that I won't fail you. Um, and so I pray that the Lord will help me to tell the truth and in a manner that pleases him to honor the dead and to bring the true criminals to justice. <clears throat> now, um, we're going to play a clip for you from Hillary Clinton's uh, testimony that she gave back in January. On January 23rd, she had an exchange with uh, Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin. And um, in that, she was saying that over and over they said that they didn't know that it was an attack. Uh, because the White House was saying that this was a protest, a spontaneous protest of just demonstrators in the street. And uh, he says, was it because, see, he says, um, talking about that, was it because of a protest or was it because guys walk out one night and decided they'd kill some Americans? Clinton says, what difference at this point, what difference does it make? That's what she said back to them. So let's play Let's play that. Information developing, was the situation fluid? Would we reach conclusions later that weren't reached initially? And, and I but, appreciate that. Madam Secretary, do you disagree with me that a simple phone call to those evacuees to determine what happened wouldn't have, wouldn't have ascertained immediately that there was no protest? I mean, that, that, was, that was a piece of information that could have been easily, easily obtained. Well, but, but Senator, with, with, within hours, if not days. Senator, I, you know, when you're in these positions, the last thing you want to do is interfere with any other process well, that's, going I, I, I on, realize, number one. I realize that's, number I realize two, that's a good excuse. Number two, but, at, well, no, it's the fact. Number two, I would recommend highly you read both what the ARB said about it and the classified ARB because even today there are questions being raised. Now, 
We have no doubt they were terrorists, they were militants, they attacked us, they killed our people. But what was going on and why they were doing what they were doing? No, 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 no. Is I, still, I, I, is still I, again, again, we no. were misled that there were supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that, an assault sprang out of that. And that was easily but ascertained I, that that was not the fact. But, but, and the American know, people could have known that within days, and, and they, they didn't know that. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. Now, okay, honestly... Good. Now, <clears throat> what, we're, what, we're, what we're going to talk about, we're going to detail how comment after comment from Hillary Clinton there was a bold-faced lie. Um, so she's saying that they that it doesn't matter whether it was a protest or whether it was a terrorist attack. So we're going to detail why that's a problem. We're going to detail how it's a problem that they're saying that they didn't know that it was an attack. <clears throat> now, uh, and there's just so many things. This is Fox News exclusive. CIA operators were denied requests for help during ben Benghazi attacks, sources say. Former Navy SEAL Tyrone Woods was part of a SEAL small team who was at the CIA annex about a mile from the U.S. consulate where Ambassador Chris Stevens and his team came under attack. So there was the attack at the consulate, right? But there were two, there were more than, uh, there were actually three attacks, and the, other, the next one was at the annex, which is a CIA secret safe house. Uh, question, obviously... How did the Al-Qaeda know the location of the secret CIA safe house? Because the attack was not just at the consulate. <clears throat> so, when, see, what happened was, is you had these Navy SEALs, and I'll talk about their mission, but there were Navy SEALs stationed at the CIA annex in Benghazi, and they heard the firing. So when Tyrone Woods, this Navy SEAL, he and others heard shots fired, they informed their higher-ups at the annex to tell them what they were hearing and requested permission to go to the consulate and help out. They were told to stand down. According to sources familiar with this exchange, soon after, they were again told to stand down. Woods and at least two others ignored those others and made their way to the consulate, which at that point was on fire. Shots were exchanged. The rescue team from the CIA annex evacuated those who remained at the consulate and Sean Smith who had been killed in the initial attack. They could, could not find the ambassador and returned to the CIA annex at about midnight. Now, if you heard, if you just listened to Hillary Clinton, she said to the senator that there were approximately 25 to 30 people who were evacuated, and she was taking credit for that as if she was the reason why those people were saved by the Navy SEALs. It's clear now that those people were saved because Tyrone Woods and the other people with him disobeyed the orders that they were told not to go and help. See, Tyrone Woods, this Navy SEAL who decided for himself to disobey the standout order, save those people in spite of what Hillary Clinton did. They were telling them to not go and help the people at the consulate. And here she is, when you just listen to her, saying that all these people were saved in spite of her. No wonder she didn't go talk to them. And that's what the senator is saying. Why didn't you talk to those evacuees to ascertain that it was an actual terrorist attack? Now, continuing on. Woods and at least two others ignored them. They, they could not find the ambassador, okay? And they returned to the CIA annex at about midnight. So he was already missing. At that point, they were again called again. They called again for military support and help because they were at taking fire at the CIA safe house or the annex. The request was denied. So now the, these Navy SEALs, soldiers, are best, trained, most highly trained soldiers are at the CIA annex, which is a secret location that Al-Qaeda should never have known about. So we're asking, how do they know? But they're there. They're asking for help. 
They're not asking to go help at this point. They're under fire. These are soldiers asking for help. So we have soldiers, I'm repeating this to you, to get this through your skulls. I want you to witness the scene in your mind. Your best soldiers at the CIA safe house taking fire, asking for help. Right. There were no communication problems at the annex. According uh, to those present at the compound, the team was in constant radio contact with their headquarters. In fact, at least one member of the team was on the roof of the annex, manning a heavy machine gun when mortars were fired at the CIA compound. The security officer had a laser on the target that was firing and repeatedly requested backup from a Spectre gunship, which is commonly used by U.S. Special Forces to provide uh, special operation teams on the ground involved in intense gunfights, firefights. So you know the movies where you have the Navy SEAL or in the movie Shooter or whoever it is, and they have the laser trained on the target, right? So the, the, the F-16s can come in with the laser-guided missiles and hit those targets. So here we have the SEALs saying, we've got the target, we've got the laser pointed at them, and just come in and shoot the missile at them. Just come and help us. We're under fire, we've got the laser pointed right at them. And nobody came. CIA, so here's what the CIA spokesman says, Jennifer Youngblood, denied the claims that requests for support were turned down. She said, we can say with confidence that the agency reacted quickly to aid our colleagues during that terrible evening in Benghazi. She said, moreover, no one at any level of the CIA told anybody not to help those in need. Claims to the contrary are simply inaccurate. In fact, it is important to remember how many lives were saved by courageous Americans who put their own safety at risk that night and that some of those selfless Americans gave their lives in the effort to rescue their comrades. Again, taking credit for the thing that they tried to uh, oppose. We'll be right back after this.